I'm glad you caught that. Okay, we're recording now. We are recording this webinar and each of the webinar in the series. We will also be posting a webinar on YouTube. We can send the link to how to get the webinar recording, as well as we'll send the link to when it will be posted, when the series will be posted on YouTube. So I hope that's helpful for everyone. We do have some information that we want you guys to actually use as resources near the end. We want to be able to have you have access. After each training, you will be receiving at the end of the day or the next day, a quick evaluation of the training, of the information, the presenters, and any uh, requests for other topics you would like to have us train. We really would like you to fill it out and send that in by Friday. So we can monitor that and make sure that we are providing the best uh, platform to learn as much information as possible as you need to learn, but also to provide an open discussion and making sure that we answer any questions um, that are relevant to your work as community health workers in COVID-19. Okay, awesome. My name is Dwan Monroe. I am program coordinator for the Institute for Public Health Innovation. I'm going to turn this into an actual PowerPoint presentation right now. Okay, great. So I wanna welcome everyone, community health workers, community health workers students, outreach workers, uh, health advocates, promotoras, whatever your title is in outreach and community health outreach, welcome and thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate you coming to participate in this session. The session should be about an hour and 15 minutes, but we do have leeway for more if we have more discussion. What we wanted to do was to begin a series of support webinars and web sessions for community health workers in DC, Maryland, and Virginia to address and discuss COVID-19 or coronavirus. We have been in the last few weeks, uh, been speaking to national uh, organizations such as National Association of Community Health Workers, the CDC, working with other partners and entities and understanding that for this um, pandemic, community health workers have an opportunity to be a vital workforce, but also realizing that the plans for the community health workers to work within a pandemic have never been created or developed. And so we know that in any type of work that community health workers do, your voice is needed and valuable and should be at the forefront of advocating for your workforce within, around, and supporting during COVID-19. So our presentation today will just give you a few updated stats for the region and what's happening in COVID-19. I know a lot of you are looking at the news um, and looking at different types of information around. So we just wanna get you caught up as of statistics from yesterday. With COVID-19, we know it changes every day, but we're gonna be showing you statistics from at least April 7th, 2020. Um, and then we're gonna have an open discussion. And because we have quite a few, over 100 people on, this is how we're gonna operate the open discussion. We gave questions during the registration that we wanted you to think about, and we wanted you to kind of relay back to us. The reason that we want to have this is to kind is to try to have an open discussion, but also to figure out what other training or topics you would like us to bring information on to support you through the COVID-19. So we will go question by question. We will take the first top five responses because we are over 100 people. Um, and then we would address those. If you were not able to ask a question or respond to a question, what we would like you to do is to, on the evaluation sheet that we'll send you, include that response on the evaluation sheet, and we will definitely get back to you when we come back for our next sessions to make sure that we are able to provide you the right information, okay? And then we pulled together a few online and local resources and just some tips and information that some of you may or may not be aware of that a lot of, hopefully your employers have provided you, but if not, we hopefully will uh, be able to enhance and add to any information that you would need to support yourselves as well as your clients. 
The next web session we will have, these sessions are every Wednesday from 11 to about 12, 15, 12, 30, but we have it till uh, slated to 115 in case we, uh, like I said, we wanna have open discussions, not just dump information onto you. So we wanna make sure we get able to answer questions, provide information, and be of some assistance and, and service to supporting you through COVID-19. Um, and then we'll wrap up with uh, a few motivational take-homes um, and information that you think you would need, as well as contact information for us and myself, especially if you do have any information around trainings, updates, or information that you would like us to provide for you. Okay, so this is our agenda for the day, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, uh, my co-host today is Ms. Tatua. She is working with us um, as an intern with IPHI, and she will be monitoring the chat as well as opening up for um, questions as we respond to some of the questions that we have within the web session. So to two and I, a little, a little green in Zoom, we, we're still learning, <laughs> so be patient with us, but mm -hmm. definitely try to provide as much information and opportunities for you to actually answer questions as much as possible. Um, like I said, we'll be asking for only the top five, maybe the top three, since we have so many people, um, responses to the questions. But still, we just want to get an understanding of some of the dialogue and information around your concerns and what is happening in COVID-19 in your areas. Um, I want to thank everyone. Um, we know we have people on from DC, Maryland, and Virginia. So thank you so much for taking time out of your day. And hopefully you can continue with the rest of the remainder of the series for the entire month. And after the month of April, we will reevaluate and see if we can continue in May to continue with other topics that may come out of these trainings or these web sessions. All right. So first I wanna get started and just some general overview. So as of yesterday, this is the map of the states with cases of COVID-19 from the CDC. The CDC is one of the best resources and most reputable for you to find the most up-to-date information around what's happening with COVID-19. As you can see, it gives you from the number of reported cases and what's happening in certain states. So we, we went regionally and we wanted to get some information. This was as of April 6th for the DC area. Um, DC is showing information by ward. And as you can see, DC COVID-19 data from April 6th, there have been 7,823 people tested. A total of 1,211 have been positive. There have only been 22 deaths, but 22 deaths is still too much. Um, but a bright side and good news is people are recovering from COVID-19. And in DC, 318 people have recovered from having a disease. DC has done what most states are, continuing, are starting to do. They have already broken down data by race um, and ethnicity, which I think is very important. And notice that within DC, um, the number of people who are testing positive, the African American, Black and African American have 353. Okay, so that's 29% of the entire 49% um, who have been um, tested positive. So knowing not just overall who's testing positive, but realizing that COVID-19, like any other disease or viral infection, or anything like a, a, a comorbidity like diabetes or HIV, unfortunately, is disproportionate in certain races, usually within African American and other races. Okay, let's look at Maryland. Confirmed cases in Maryland, we have 4,371. This was as of yesterday, um, April 7th. There have been 103 deaths, and that was reported in the last 24 hours. Uh, we do have a large number in Maryland of people who've tested negative, 27,000. But there is a large number of hospitalizations due to that, 1,106. But again, 
uh, Maryland is also showing an increase of people who are being released out of isolation. Um, and with the Maryland statistics, and you can actually go on to your local state health department to find these uh, statistics. They have the counties, how the counties are being most affected, as well as the total cases. They also do age distribution and gender. Recently, uh, Governor Hogan announced they're going to be including information related to race and ethnicity. So we're going to be on the lookout for that. As a public health institution, we are, our mission is to understand and how to support health equity and looking at inequalities and inequities within health in the DC, Maryland, and Virginia region. So it's important to understand, particularly as community health workers, as you work in the field, around all races and ethnicities, but realizing where's the most prevalence of the disease reported cases as well as deaths. For Virginia, as of yesterday, they're, they're doing a lot of testing, 28,645. They have a total cases of 3,333. Hospitalizations a little bit lower, 563. And deaths, uh, total, but uh, but are on the rise, unfortunately, as 63. Okay, so we wanted to give a, a quick, just regional uh, snapshot of what's happening. Um, I know a lot of you are staying abreast and focused on um, the areas that you're particularly living in and working in. Some of you are probably still already out in the field and see a lot of what we just discussed. Okay, did we have a question, Tatua? Nope, I just wanted to um, kind of give everyone, I just said that these regional statistics are found uh, via the DC, Maryland, and Virginia Health Department's websites, and that these stats are updated every day. Um, so I highly recommend, you know, checking and making sure you have the most up-to-date statistics. Thank you so much, yes. All right, so recently, um, I have been very busy <laughs> on virtual calls with a lot of national uh, associations, the CDC. We have been uh, doing a lot of research with the Department of Homeland Security, with a lot of state and local agencies who are now realizing and understanding that community health workers are poised to be the public health workforce that changes emergency preparedness efforts in the midst of national and global disasters. Community health workers could be trained to prevent, detect, and respond to the pandemic. And actually, there is a actual training for CHWs in reference to COVID-19 that has been developed now at Harvard University. So we have the link here, but you will be able to click onto that link and get that information. Um, when we send you the uh, uh, evaluation. So we will be including some um, URL links, and I know you can't click on them now, but I just wanted to show those to you, but we will send that to you in an information sheet along with the evaluation. So you'll be able to go on and click into them and go right to the information that we're referencing today. Okay? So in talking with the National Association of Community Health Workers on several occasions, they agree that whether your staff, uh, your staff in the call center as a community health worker, you're translating information, if you're connecting with clients online, feeding the hungry, collecting data, educating the community, or advocating for change, NACHW echoes the, U, the United States Department of Homeland Security, who has identified community health workers as essential critical infrastructure workers for during COVID-19 response efforts. So this basically says your workforce is one of the most invaluable workforces that could really support connecting to the community around COVID-19 and making sure that your community um, is, has the relevant information, resources, and that you are also um, understanding how you can support your communities. Again, we're also hearing that CHWs are unique frontline public health workforce that helps to ensure continuity of functions critical to public health and the economy. 
So when today's COVID-19 community health workers could become an epi our epic, excuse me, an um, epidemic response core for the future, always ready to help us fight the next epidemic. So if a lot of you who are CHWs, unfortunately, who may have lost your jobs, or if a lot of you are community health workers who've been doing this work for a while and are seasoned and are looking to a different career path within the, the realm of community health outreach, looking at response cores and working with uh, frontline, uh, other frontline um, responders, the community health worker could be the role that could fill a lot of those needs within certain epidemics. So in, in doing that, what we wanted to do is we wanted to have an open discussion just to get some feedback because we know even though people are saying, yes, we want CHWs, they could be you know, the best workforce to do this. There have been challenges that we've heard from our CHWs at IPHI as well as other CHWs in the region around uh, things like communication, things like um, providing the proper uh, protective equipment. And so we just didn't want to assume from a few CHWs uh, that information is just generalized. We want to kind of open it up to see exactly answering some of these questions and giving us some information and feedback so we can start providing you more support around particular challenges, okay? So our first question is, how have your job duties changed since COVID-19? So what I, the first thing I want to do is, if you want to answer the question, please in the chat, put yes, I want to answer, so that Tatua can see who you are and we can open up your mic to answer the question. Yep. Okay. Yes, I am standing by, so don't all rush at once. <laughs> <laughs> How have your job duties changed since COVID-19? Are you still working? Have you been laid off? Karen English would like to answer. And awesome. I will find her and unmute her. And also Carrie Tassaro would also like to answer. Great. Hi, Karen. Okay. Um, I have... Uh, Sorry, I have unmuted you, I think. Karen, thank you. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Thank you so oh, good. much. Good morning, Karen English, certified community health care worker in Maryland with Sisters Together and Reaching. Um, I just want to say thank everyone, first of all, and say that I have been fortunately blessed that we are still operating. I am in the fourth week of teleworking from home mm -hmm. and physical distancing. And meaning that um, I work on the ED initiative um, through Bayview. So I'm still currently receiving patients and my physical distancing with my patients is um, generally um, filling up an envelope with my information and the um, ED initiative and how I can assist these patients at this time. And mm -hmm. I have been successfully been able to reach some of my patients to either link them back to their provider mm -hmm. or link them to a primary care doctor, depending on insurance. Most of mine have been priority partners, so that's been working well for them. Okay. Because some providers are still seeing folks. So I'm currently teleworking fourth week and it's um, been pretty good. Just main challenges um, currently with it is just um, uh, waiting, <laughs> waiting pretty much. And um, so, so you're waiting for patients to come, or what do you? What patients do you, what to what call back and respond. Got you. Um, okay. In efforts with that, sisters together and reaching, um, we have also went virtual. We have. Um, a Facebook page where about mm -hmm. we are now currently right now live on Tuesdays doing uh, meditation with my colleague Sean who hosts that. So we're looking at different avenues to continue to reach our patients in our community um, in those in those um, efforts. Oh, awesome! Thank you so much, Karen. 
And my last thing, thank you guys for the resources that you guys are sending out um, to us. That has also been beneficiary for me to service the patients by one, I do call and follow up on those resources. Mm -hmm. A lot Good. of the churches right now, I would currently say our elderly and our seniors run those programs most of the time. And those services will be closed due to those who are servicing the community so they don't put themselves at risk, at risk. and they mm -hmm. are leaving detailed messages on how to receive services so thank you so much for that okay you're welcome great who else do we have to tour um so we have carrie tesoro and i will unmute her okay unmute carrie can you unmute yourself is it working Sorry. Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Hi. So I am a medical case manager down in Northeast Virginia. Carrie, I'm can you speak up or get closer to your mic? Yep. Can you hear me? You sound a little far away. Is that better? Oh, much better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, you. I had it coming through my Bluetooth. Sorry about that. No problem. Um, so one of the things that um I'm in Norfolk, Virginia, I'm a medical case manager. And one of the things that our agency has done is um, they've got us both teleworking from home, thankfully, and they've split us up so that we're coming into office in much smaller shifts. Okay. So we might be in, um, you know, less than 10 people in an entire building. Uh, so there's plenty of social distancing between us. Um, in addition to like serving our clients, it's been mm -hmm. a little difficult in the sense of like, you know, you want a social distance and um, we're not doing as many face-to-face -face visits with our clients if we right. can help it. Um, when we do need to see them, if they're able to meet us at our office, we do have a really a giant conference table, which has been great because you can put uh, that six or seven feet between you two. Mm -hmm. um, but outside of that, like this virus and with everything going on, it really, it really has changed the way that we're providing services right now, mm. trying to make sure we're limiting contact with both the client and ourselves. Right, right. Thank you for that. Thanks. Who's next? Um, so we had Carrie Seeley. Okay. Unmute her. But she did put in the chat already that uh, something is that she is working from home, so maybe she can speak more. Hi, Carrie. Okay. Carrie. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, calling from New York City. Oh, um, wow. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, just to say that, you know, this has affected all of us across the nation. Yes. Um, we, we, I'm a supervisor of CHWs, and we're working from home. So mm. we're calling our participants and checking in with them and seeing how they're doing <laughs> as well as giving resources like for food pantries um, and mental health you know awesome. services available yeah but, um, <laughs> we're also we're also checking in on our staff because you know <laughs> yes listening to and hearing that people are you know dying all around us you know mm. our, own, our own friends and yes. as well our participants, families, and friends. So we do daily check-ins with each other. Awesome. Thank you, because New York is like one of the hardest hit cities. In, in exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So daily check-ins, that sounds awesome. Thank you so much for calling in. And we do have one more person. Do you want yes. to move on? Or? No, no, no. We'll take one, we'll take one more. And you know, even though we're talking about what's changed, also tell me what are your top challenges, particularly that you're hearing from your clients, <clears throat> challenges that you are facing yourself personally during the pandemic. Let's address, we'll keep going and we're going to address some of these questions on this first page. Okay, so I have Sabrina Patterson. If you would like to unmute yourself or we can do it as well. Um Sabrina. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, yes. Sabrina. How are you? Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, Good. I'm calling, from, I'm calling from Virginia as well, the Tidewater area of Virginia. Okay. And um, um, 
I'm actually, um, my agency, um, Carrie's part of my agency too. I just heard her talk a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, they're pretty much trying to work into the best of our ability down here. Okay. Um, we, I'm actually working from home and um, I'm a care navigator. And um, so I'm actually working remotely. And um, it's been challenging for me because I'm not really used to working from home. I'm used mm. to being out there. Exactly. You know, yeah. and I've been out here for a lot of years. So this is really different for me. Mm. Um, I know the challenges I have been facing with contacting clients and getting clients to contact you back and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, like somebody said earlier about waiting for them to contact you back. Um, we also have like our agency has um, food pantry, USDA and stuff like that. And so okay. I've had, we've had um, social distancing deliveries like and some of our clients my clients are still working they need bus tickets and stuff like that mm. so um having to like um go past the house and put the bus tickets in the mailbox you know and um or putting the groceries at the doorstep and stuff like that um and you know but doing it doing the what we can do best and you know exactly. um, actually going and checking like you said checking in on them and stuff you know i've been going back through my old older clients as well mm -hmm. and just see how they're doing and stuff like that um but it's, it is a difference i mean this is really a um i think it's hard for uh, it's just as hard for us as workers as it is mm. for the clients i think tell and me how like how it's been hard on you um maybe personally facing this pandemic well, for me, it's just, um, for one thing, I feel like I got sent home <laughs> earlier than other people because of my age, and I didn't feel happy about that. Okay. Because I am a more seasoned um, worker. I've been in the field for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, um, but I'm, I'm quite a healthy person, so I didn't feel like I wanted to be sent home. But Okay. Um, so that has been a challenge for me, just trying to be okay with that. <laughs> got you. <laughs> I, um, but, uh, you know, but um, other than that, I've been kind of sufficing the whole thing and it hasn't been, I think the baddest part for me, the hardest challenge for me and um, just um, being remotely, working from a computer all day, you know, mm. and stuff like that, or, or using the phone all day and stuff like that, even, um, you know, being in the office and, you know, you get your connection and then you go out and you do what you have to do and you take your folks and, you, and you know, you do your referrals and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so... It's kind of like been like um, like hard for me as far as just that sitting still and doing it all here and I'm and the other part is getting fat because I'm eating a lot sitting here. Mm. That's just the, that's just the funny of it. But I did I, hear you. <laughs> I did start getting up and um, moving around a little bit more and stuff. But um, this has really been a change. Um, yeah, big change. All the years that I've been doing this, yeah. Thank you for sharing. And I think a big part of letting you guys have a discussion and talk about this is because some people are isolated. And um, I'm so glad that organizations are having regular check-ins with staff, seeing how the staff is. Um, but unfortunately, there's some organizations um, that aren't doing that with our CHWs. And so uh, it's good to hear this information. It's good to hear your voice what you're telling us will be shared with with a lot of our partners that we work with and a lot of organizations so they can continue to hear the voice of community health workers around the challenges and what you guys need and how you can continue to support your clients um Tatua, who's next so um i have a question from dallin um subblefield and he's from maryland and he okay. asked where, where can chws who are not active but are certified and want to help like, what can they do to help? Where can we go? What organizations can we go to? That's a really good question. So what, what I would like to do is, because I'm not going to say I have all the answers. What I can, I'm going to suggest a few things, but if someone can answer that um, and give some information more relevant or actual location, that would be great. But there are um, community-based volunteer corps um, who are looking for volunteers. Um, I'm not sure if uh, they're not paying folks, but they're looking for people who understand and know the community <coughs> and are able to and willing to be able to go out to help support people to bring them information and bring them um, food and connect them to resources. So 
you can check within your states for your volunteer um, resource, resource volunteer corps. And they usually are community people who volunteer to address things like pandemics and um, uh, emergency preparedness situations such as this. You can also check your local um, YMCAs as well as maybe check your local clinics and as well as um, your lodges and, and, and check and see who is actually doing things within the community. I know schools are providing, um, I don't know if they continue to provide lunches and meals for kids during the week. They may need volunteers to help and support. Um, and actually I've been seeing a, a large number. So if you're CHWs who actually were laid off and are not working, there are other organizations who are hiring people who are part of the essential uh, core, essential needs personnel who need temporary people right now who are paying. So they may be um, places that you can check out to help support the community. Does anyone um, else have any suggestions or resources related to that question? Hi, uh, yep. Um, Candace Treen and Rebecca Illingworth, um, thank you guys so much for your feedback. They also mentioned food banks are looking for volunteers, mm -hmm. uh, blood banks, and then mm. Rebecca did say that uh, the Maryland Food Bank uh, was specifically looking for volunteers. Awesome. Um, and then Karen English did also say, Sisters Together and Reaching has organizational huddles. Oh, she's just saying that every morning on Zoom to check in and hold meetings. Okay. But um, so uh, to kind of move on, um, Mia Affelwork, uh, okay. she kind of just had a comment. Um, so she said, my job has allowed us to telework from home. However, our hours have been cut. However, mm. I'm still hopefully and staying encouraging. My client population are two week readmission. I would like to get more resources on getting prescription refills for my clients. Mm. And then of course, more information on food pantry and electric assistance. Nice. And one of the things that I know we at IPHI, we have CHWs who work with uh, heart failure patients who um, are having pharmacy prescription issues. I don't know if you're checking with pharmacies. A lot of the pharmacies now are offering delivery um, and also offering uh, shipment of prescriptions at low or no cost. Excuse me, that might be something that you might want to look into for your prescriptions. Um, and the medicines for your kids. Um, but thank you for um, staying hopeful. Uh, you know, we're sorry that your hours got cut, but that you are working with your clients as best you can. And if anyone, after this call, once we send out the evaluation and information and resources that we're gonna provide after this call, um, if you hear a question, if somebody is a question or resource and you know a resource, please respond back to the email with that information and we'll get it out to everyone who's on the call today as well. Okay, so thank you so much. I, I know CHWs are always there and valuable with a lot of resources and information. So I'm so glad you guys are stepping up and helping us together. I really appreciate that. Do we have any more questions around yeah. these responses? Okay, great. Um, so we have Priscilla Zeno, Zeno. Um, mm -hmm. if you, I think she wants to talk to us. So if you would like to unmute yourself, Priscilla, um, we'd great. love to hear from you. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, so my name is Priscilla Zeno. I am with That Zen Life Wellness Foundation here in Suffolk, Virginia. We service the Hampton Roads area. We're a new and upcoming nonprofit. <clears throat> I think the biggest challenge um, that um, we've been facing, we're not very big, but the biggest challenge is mostly just trying to connect with other certified community healing um certified community health workers mm. um and connecting with them in a sense that <clears throat> we all understand that they are different certified community health workers some specializing in some areas and, and others specializing in another let me just give you an example uh -huh. so even though um i am fortunate enough to be a certified community health worker and you know have the training uh, from the Institute for Public Health Innovation, thank God. <laughs> uh, but I'm also trained as a certified peer recovery specialist. Awesome. Um, 
Yes. So I'm so I'm trained in both areas. So that means that I can speak to the public health side and I can also speak to the mental health and recovery side. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes it's kind of challenging, um, you know, being new and upcoming to try to connect with other community health workers. So I'm really excited about the fact that you guys have put this together because what it does is it allows um, people such as myself to be able to, and other, and other community health workers that are, that are CPRS, Certified Peer Recovery Specialists, mm -hmm. um, to connect with the community health workers that are working on the public health side so that we can meet each other in the middle and figure mm. out how we can help those that are suffering mental health wise and are suffering with regards to their recovery and still be able to provide those same things from the public health side, just because they're going through the mental health side and the recovery doesn't mean that they still don't need those things from the public health side. Absolutely. Yes, thank you so much for, for saying that. So yes, so knowing that our, the peer recovery specialist is a type of uh, community health worker and connecting to the specialty around mental health um, with public health and healthcare is very crucial. I think one of the things, um, speaking to you in Virginia, there is a, in, in DC, Maryland, and, and as well, they all have community health worker associations. And That's so right. That could be a uh, possible uh, place as well. I know the associations are still holding and will be holding virtual meetings and are doing some things for community health workers themselves to be able to support the work that they're, uh, the capacity that they're working in now, but also to connect to other CHWs within those different specialties to be able to help support their patients mentally and um, who are dealing with uh, physical challenges as well. In the, the newsletter too, I, I'm really grateful for that. The news, newsletter that's gonna be coming out for C, CCHWs, for those of you who um, are uh, interested, I'm not yes. sure, Juan, if you know about you know yes. how, they can, how they can sign up for that, but I think that will be a great resource as well. Yes, we will definitely provide an opportunity. So we <laughs> take this, this actual uh, month-long series out to all of our partners. I think over about 900 different organizations, community health workers, allies and partners. So we will be doing the same as far as a newsletter, as well as we're developing the Center for Community Health Workforce website. So that work website will be an offshoot from our general website. We'll just, just focus on trainings, policy, information, and resources for CHWs. So we're, we're in the midst of developing that now. Um, and you'll, we'll, when we launch that, you will know that through the newsletter and through a special announcement. And you'll be able to go to that particular website as, not, as well as get information, but also give us support and information on types of trainings, things you're seeing in your community how you can support each other. So thank you so much for that. Oh, I have one last thing that I wanted sure. to say, just so that everyone knows. Um, <clears throat> our organization right now is providing um, classes. Um, and we provide, with those classes, we also provide 15 scholarships on a monthly basis. You can find out what those classes are by going to our website, which is thatzenlife.org. And I'm actually typing that in so that everybody will get a chance to see it. Okay, great. Thank you for that resource. And again, when we send out the evaluation, we will have uh, an opportunity for you guys to share your resources with us. And we can share that out through um, the public who are attending our, our web sessions. Thank you so much. Tatua, who do we have next? Um, that is it. No, if anyone else wants to speak, please put it in the chat. Um, we'd love to hear from you. We have a um, few more questions. I see people have their hands raised. Oh, um, Nita, not a um, bot. She uh -huh. has a question. Uh, if you would like to unmute yourself, Nita. Hello. Hi. Hi, Nita. Hey. Hi, Nita. Hey, how, are you? how are you? I'm good, Juan. How are you? Good. Um, so I'm Nita Vaughn. I'm a CHW here in Washington, D.C. But I think I have more of a concerning question. Um, so I haven't worked with, um, recently worked with anyone as a CHW. 
Um, and I've done a lot of work within the district and I still do, you know, some helpful work with some organizations. However, I have um, started my business back in 2016 so that I could do more as a community health worker. Mm -hmm. um, I think we play a lot of different roles between mental health, case management, mm -hmm. you know, just so much in the communities. We're not just that like peer support is like mental health, but we're like, we're doing so much. So I guess my question would be, even for myself, um, having my business, I'm really trying to think how I could just get out there to really um, get some, give some help and support. Um, are there any organizations or partners that would be willing to work with small businesses who could, you know, like myself, be able to provide a service? Um, you know, so what type of services do you provide? So I'm still doing the community health worker work. Um, like I recently just did one <laughs> the other day, helping a client out with, um, he's right now in the hospital. So he was having a difficult time reaching out to the nursing supervisor on getting his bed moved around and some issues with that. So mm -hmm. I kind of just been assisting people with the primary care appointments, um, even with caregivers, assisting them to get the 719A forms out to physicians. A lot mm. of them are doing telehealth work. So some of those people would need, you know, their diapers or gloves or whatever that's right. still there that we can get um, for families. So I've been kind of navigating people through that. Um, also helping people to do the telehealth appointments because sometimes it's becoming a bit confused. You know, it's confusing for some people who don't, who haven't used it and just sometimes just jump to go to the ER or the doctor's. And I've been doing more of the coaching side. So at CHW, you know, we do a lot of goal setting. Right. So I've been using that tool to assist clients with coaching. So right now we're, we're in a pandemic. There's a lot of panic. You know, anxieties are really high. Um, mm -hmm. So I've been just coaching people to really kind of focus on their goals, set a plan, exercise in the house, fitness goals, and sending out resources like that. So you're like a community health worker at large. You work for yourself? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you could partner with any organization who would need a, a community health worker working out in the field or working um, virtually or just supporting clients um, as, as needed, correct? Yeah. Okay. That sounds great. So you're a resource yourself. And like I said, you guys, um, when we send out the information for the evaluation, just put in that evaluation what resource that you have available that you want to share with everyone, and we'll make that okay. available to everyone. So that's great to know. Thank you, Nita. You're welcome. Do we have another question? Any more questions? Or any more um, responses? Um, I'm going to move to the next slide because we, we, we've been getting, even though we've addressed some challenges, what we have been getting, which is great, is what has been going well while you're working in the community. So some of you had been able to really adapt to this um, phone email lifestyle. It may be different, but it sounds like some of you um, and your organizations and your employers have put tools and things in place for you to, to be able to continue to do outreach, but in a different, a different way. So let's continue the discussion. Even if you have a challenge, address, let us know what that is, but also continue to tell us what has been going well while you're working in the community during this time and what resources can you share or do you need during this time? And if we could get a CHW who is still out in the field, because I know there are a few that I've talked to in Virginia who still are doing home visits because it's mandated through the health department and some outreach workers are still going out. Um, what's been going well? Um, have you been giving enough information, communication, protection? to beat out in the field and what resources do, would you like to share? So we have anyone that can kind of speak or talk to that or still wants to address a possible challenge. Hi, Dewan. So um, Abby has raised her hand. Okay. So, um, so Abby, I don't know if you have something you want to contribute or um, talk to the group about. Oh, sorry. That was earlier related to the Community Health Workers Association. I'll lower my hand now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to talk about that again at the end as well. Okay. Um, so, hi, Priscilla. I see you're raising your hand. 
Yes. Um, so I just wanted to say very quickly, I know that for those that are looking for, you know, who they can reach out to or how they can reach out. Just off the top of my head, what I was thinking was, is that um, we don't necessarily, we don't, I mean, I think partnering with other organizations is awesome. But in the event that you can't find an organization to partner with, just some, doing something as simply as simple as taking the time out of your day to go walk around and do uh, outreach in your own neighborhood. Mm. Just going door to door and seeing what the people that you actually live around need. Um, a lot of times, you know, even with being the neighbor, sometimes they, they, people don't know what it is that you do because you leave work and you come home every day. This is a great opportunity for you, you to not just get to know the people that are in your neighborhood, but also be able to do the outreach as well. All right. Thank you so much again, Priscilla. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Um, we want to hear from you. We want to see what you can let us know is happening on the ground or any changes. Are there any CHWs who unfortunately have lost their job um, and may be uh, looking to uh, pursue um, that career in a different area within the region? Hi, Beverly. I see you first raised your hand. Hey, guys. Um, I'm, you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I was going to answer the first one, not the second one. Um, oh, that's all right. Go ahead. I'm still semi working in the field. Um, mm -hmm. Clients, most of their appointments are telemed right now, but I do have some clients that still need to pick up med. Um, and I have one, I don't know how she has an appointment to see a primary care, but she does. Um, so I have to pick her up. So I have my, my mask, my gloves that were provided to me. By okay, that, um, thank God. Um, but I am being very precautious when I go out, um, even, you know, in the community as well as when I even go to the clinic, I'm wearing my mask, you know, uh -huh. um, I just, not just for me, but for others, you know, I think yes. it's, it's really take heed that it's not always just about us. It's about other people as well. And so, yes, um, I think, EMS has done a great job of, you know, protecting me in the community. Awesome. That's great. Really great to hear. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If anyone would like to talk, you can either raise your hand or um, you can send it through the chat as well if you um, would rather do that. Oh, hi, Zena Barr. Um, I see you've raised your hand. Hi, how are you? Hello. Good. Good. Thank you so much for having this um, support um, system for us. This is uh, outstanding. And, um, and I, I guess we uh, are all. Um, figuring new ways to do this this thing that we've done for a while. Yeah. Um, the one thing I am um, appreciative of is this epidemic or pandemic has humbled a lot of people mm. knowing that you're, you're right there with that client, that your family and your friends are or can be affected. Mm -hmm. So it kind of makes you um, more aware and present when you're um, doing your work, you don't feel like you're, it's them and you, mm. it's us now. So um, that's the one thing the pandemic has done that made people um, more of a common mind than mm. before. That's just a comment. Well, that's a great comment. Thank you. And we need to be aware of that. Um, and I've heard that amongst other CHWs and just people in general, people are finding ways to become community in different ways. Um, uh, via virtual, um, people are doing phone trees. Um, I know the associations are coming up with some fun, exciting ways to connect you guys as well. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But it's, it, it, it has... Um, what a different sense of community and what that means for individuals and how um, you as community health workers already are aware of how to do that. But it kind of helps 
also your clients realize that everybody's kind of in this together and they're going through the same thing and everybody can support each other. So thank you for that. Anyone else? This is great dialogue, guys. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, we have a question from chat from Sabrina Patterson. She mm -hmm. says, it has been advised not to transport in cars due to closeness. What mm -hmm. is thoughts on that? Um, my thoughts are, if you are with your organization, and number one, if you normally were able to transport clients and now they're telling you not to, you need to follow the guidance of your organizations. Number one, um, there's a, usually in general, there's a liability issue. Some organizations have worked out that CHWs can transport clients, but right now, since we are in this pandemic and we're looking at um, social distancing, um, that is great advice. But my advice to all CHWs are, if you have a question around connecting to your clients that has not been addressed within your organization, I would um, really encourage you to go back to your managers and supervisors with these questions. And if they have provided you guidance around doing it or not doing it, I would follow the guidance. Um, I know people may need support and help. Um, I'm not sure what other opportunities for transportation that your organization can support them with. If some states, the public transportation may, may or not be available already. Um, so those are things you're gonna have to work with out with your clients, but you're gonna have to consider that your organizations have put in certain policies and guidelines to protect not only just you, but also the client. Um, and if there's other alternatives, of, if it's picking up something, can something be delivered? Can it be shipped in, a, in another alternative? That might help as well. But policies and guidelines that have been developed by your organizations around supporting you and the clients, um, let's be mindful of those, um, but also let's go back you individually to your managers and supervisors and discuss possible alternatives to those when that policy is in place. And if anybody else has a suggestion around that, um, please feel free as well. Um, so we have another comment um, mm -hmm. from the chat from Gregory Rogers, and he says, healthcare, homeless, self-care is the most important thing to be able to provide services. So, um, so Greg, Gregory, I don't know if you maybe want to talk to the group about kind of um, what yeah. your comment is or if you have a question. Okay. Um, we're kind of Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Hi. Thank you, Gregory. Thank you for, for providing this service for us. It's really important. One of the things that I find that's really important for me is self-care, mm -hmm. is to be able to debrief with a therapist Mm. Um, because we see so much and hear yes. so much yes. and when and I can share my experience when I first started to work I wasn't debriefing I'm in recovery and I end up relapsing mm. and my director said Greg I need you to you know uh, let help help you mm -hmm. and when I, I came can. back to work um, 19 months ago I got a therapist and once a week I go debrief with her mm -hmm. And my whole life has changed because I see this work differently now. I see it as, the, the, as a whole person, not just me, somebody just taking everything in and not letting the stress out. Um, and especially with this pandemic, because now I'm starting, so I'm working the hotline for healthcare for the homeless that provides transportation to John Hopkins. Mm -hmm. um, I get to hear who who, who passes that day, mm. um, all the critical stuff. Right, right. So, um, and now I'm doing telework, tele, you know, with tele whatever with my therapist. Mm -hmm. But I just believe because of the work we do, we need to be able to talk to somebody else to debrief, whether it's a clergy member, mm -hmm. whether it's a coworker, um, you go to 12 step meetings, whatever works. It, for you to debrief, do you walk? Do you do yoga? Mm -hmm. You have to debrief. Absolutely, that is great, great advice and support. I just um, before this call, I have a weekly therapy session on Wednesday mornings every Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> so I'm a proponent of therapy. I know um, one of the things that can be a challenge for CHWs is not all organizations can provide 
that type of service. I'm hoping that most do provide some type of opportunity to have free or low cost or no cost or through your insurance, through your organizations, but some CHWs volunteer, some work on just salary and um, unfortunately, some organizations aren't still providing health insurance for our community health, which is, yeah, that's another conversation. But um, if you are in a situation where you need that type of service that is not available through your organization, um, organizations like NAMI, the National Association of Mental Illness, and um, uh, looking for uh, opportunities for free and low cost counseling within maybe their health department or check in and see what other resources that you would normally send your clients to around that that you could utilize yourself so thank you so much for that gregory that was great because we really thank you for your thank you for your service thank you sure we really need to um understand that you guys do see and go through a lot it can be a lot um you know as a trainer i always train and talk about self-care managing your stress and your burnout so anything that can keep you um grounded and, and understanding and stable within your own self to continue to help your clients, by all means, um, take advantage of that, whatever that is for you. Thanks for that. Who else do we have? Hi, so we have um, a really good comment from Rebecca um, Illingworth. She says that, hi, I'm a CCHA and work at MedStar Harbor Hospital in the ED. We have been mandated to work from home, but, do, but we do have work phones and laptops. I can follow patients that have been in the ED by phone. Can be challenging to make a connection with people without meeting face-to-face. -face. For the most part, it is working and finding I have more time to reach out to existing and past clients. Oh, great. Good, so now it's kind of bringing you guys in. You're following up more you're able to maybe connect more. I know it's been a little tough reaching those clients that can't reach back um, and realizing, you know, people may, your phones not be, may not be working because affordability, those types of things. So and with, with your job in general, there are always um, fortunate barriers, but now with this other added global situation, it has created other barriers, but it sounds like a lot of you are working as best you can to manage some of the challenges um, and connect to some of the resources. So this is great. Okay, so we have another hand raised from um, from Dallin Stubblefield. Okay. Hi, Dallin, if you want to unmute yourself. Hey, how's it going this afternoon, everybody? Good. How are you doing today? Hi. I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Um, so I just wanted to just touch on the self-care piece um for just chws in general mm -hmm. um you know i know that a lot of us are used to being in the field used to helping used to being usually the first person that's called or the last person that our clients or the people we work with speak to in an evening or in a situation like this um and you know i more so just want to offer just encouragement and just say like you know our work is important you are important and sometimes we forget mm -hmm. that self-worth in a situation like this mm -hmm. where there are so many different moving parts there are so many different different moving aspects where people can get lost and let's essentially lost in the sauce and that's yeah. something that we are all too familiar <laughs> that's something that we are all too familiar with because we deal with clients who are often lost in society who society usually forgets who are usually right. cast to the side and so um you know just you know just you guys we we matter okay right. um if nobody has told you this by now and i'm sure people have but if nobody has really expressed it to you you guys matter we matter Absolutely. Um, we are frontline individuals we may not be in the hospitals um we may not be you know some of us may have to work from home some of us may have to work from the field but it's really important for us to understand our self-worth in these matters and understanding that self-worth and knowing that every single phone call that you make, every text message mm -hmm. that you answer, every email that you're on, every conference call that we're in, like these are tools and these are ways that we are making a difference. You know, that not only is going to affect just our individual communities, but affect our regions, our states, our country and the world as a whole with the decisions that we make. Absolutely. So I just want everybody to kind of understand that and that, you know, hey, you know, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling out, you know, 
the people that are just on this call alone are people you could reach out to. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. That was that was that's a great way to end this part of the uh, the session. But if we have questions, we will continue. But thank you so much for that. Hi. Yep. We have Angela, another question. That was great. Yes. Uh, from Nita. Uh, will we finally become billable like peer support workers because of this pandemic? They should see mm. how we are needed. Well, I, what I can say to that is document. So here is another <laughs> opportunity to document. Documentation is key. So we're looking at things because now we've, we've moved to certification and we know after certification should be understanding how to better have better salaries, but also how to pay for your services, right? Some states like Minnesota, um, few who are doing certification, the purpose is to move towards making sure that you will be billable, that you will be uh, paid fee for your services um, through your organizations. Now, if you're individual CHW working, I'm not, I'm not sure, but I know through your organizations, the purpose, one of the purposes of certification is to understand how do we pay for services. But in order, here we go again, to make sure that your services are needed, and they are, just like we got to the certification piece based on evidence from documentation, we also need to document now we're in this COVID-19, this epidemic, the unique and the, the changes and what you guys have already talked about, this is the stuff that needs to be documented as well to have the evidence to show that yes, this should be a, um, a, a, a workforce that is billable, that is utilized effectively. You saw the Homeland Security, the CDC, APHA, National Association of CHW, you have national advocacy partners that are looking to make sure that within what was, what's happening now, after the math, after this goes down, how you can be a follow-up and getting people back on track, but also looking to the future as a part of Response Corps, how valuable your role and your, your, your scope of work is. And in doing that, documenting the things that you've done, the processes that you've been through, the challenges that have been there, but also how have you been able to manage those challenges and what it means for you to be in that role is very key. So I can't really answer the question, will it be? But I can tell you documentation is the one thing <laughs> that we need to show that it is uh, something that is valuable and billable. And if anybody else has a comment they wanna add to that, please feel free. Okay. Priscilla, you raised your hand. Yes, so um, I just wanna add a little piece about, you know what I'm saying, getting paid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so um, just also while you're doing your documentation, make sure that whatever organization or business that you're putting in place, make sure that you're putting yourself in the best position to get paid. Mm. Because um, you can be a community certified community health worker, but if you haven't, if you don't have a business license and you're just saying that you're certified, certified community health worker, that, does, that doesn't put you in the best position. Also, when you get your business license, I'm not going to go fully into it, but you want to just make sure that you just set your organization up so that people can see you as an organization and not see you as the certified community health worker. Mm. These are really key things that you need to put in place. And there are some other things that you can do to put yourself in place. Make sure that you don't know understand you're connected to your local, your state, your state government, and your federal government contracts. All of these things are very important. Um, I, do biz I also do business um, mentoring and business coaching. Um, and I help uh, those, especially uh, returning citizens, help them start start businesses. So if you mm -hmm. guys have uh, uh, some clients who are returning to the community and they are looking to uh, create their own um, uh, income, if you're interested in that, you can also hit me up on the same um, website, that'sinlife.org. Great, thank you.
Mm -hmm. Hi, Dewan. So yes. um, Rebecca had an idea in the chat. She says, great discussion. Is there any way we can share our contact information to others here today? I think we can. Um, we may be able to share emails definitely through uh, maybe a contact list or a listserv through this web session. I think we will we'll be able to work on something for you, for you guys for that. We know that some people are going to be coming to some sessions other, uh, or different than others. So we want to make sure that if you are aware of a session and you haven't registered, make sure you register because from the registrations we do it through constant contact, we actually keep lists of the different types of contacts that we have. And this will be a separate list maybe for um, the COVID-19 web sessions. And we can probably send those emails out if everybody is okay and agrees to that. We wanna make sure that everybody is, gives us permission that that's okay to share their contact information. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll talk about that again on our next session and we'll figure out a platform on how to send that information to you guys, provided that everybody agrees. So we may have to have you sign a waiver or just agree to, yes, you can share my um, email information. Yeah, maybe Delon, we could um, kind of add that to the evaluation that we'll send out. Definitely. Maybe we'll we'll okay. add that question and make sure we get everyone who wants to. Who wants to. Great, mm -hmm. tour. All right, I'm gonna move on. Um, if we have one more burning question, we can take it. Um, so I have a question from Candice. Um, she says, slightly off topic, however, however, will there be incentives for people working during this pandemic? Has any federal mandate been discussed thus far about raising pay rates during this time? Um, what I can say, there are federal mandates through your employer around uh, if you become sick or a family member becomes sick and how you're going to be paid and paid in sick leave. But as far as mandated federal pay rates through a pandemic, um, that is something that we need to research and look into. I have not heard anything yet, but it doesn't mean it's not happening or that it's not out there. So thank you for that question, and we'll definitely start researching that. Abby, um, if you're still on the call, uh, sh maybe she can answer to that. You know, thus far, there have been no discussions in, well, not to my knowledge, we have not seen mm -hmm. any public information on increases or incentives for essential workers or people who are working in the field and have to work in the field. Mm -hmm. um, we recognize that it, it could sometimes feel a little bit unfair that there are some of us who are working from home while others have to put themselves out on the front line. Mm -hmm. um, it is the job that we signed up for, um, but it is something to think about. I know I've seen some nurses. Uh, there is a change.org petition that nurses have pulled together to ask for um, a student loan. Forgiveness, uh, yeah nurses who have to work on the front line um right. who thinking creatively i think right now that may not be a point that is being focused on because i think many states are just thinking about how could we support the number of people who are unemployed and use the, their budgets in that way but i think there's opportunities through working with the chw association mm -hmm. um in your state to think about for those who have had to work and continue to be on the front lines, what are creative ways that maybe don't necessarily take dollar amounts because budgets are decimated across the country? How could you advocate or identify unique ways to be, uh, uh, I guess, not necessarily rewarded, but uh, for that disparity in that you have to work while others don't to be justified? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but in the future, that's something that we could definitely think about how to organize around. And she kind of also asks, like, where can they potentially find information um, on this topic? Hmm. On top, so information on yeah, if there's like yeah, and if there's like federal mandate. 
Yeah, um, I would say, you know, every day, um, I know the federal government is having discussions daily around um, new policies related to COVID-19 as we're learning more about it and where, you know, there's new labor pieces being released, new pieces are being released for people who are unemployed. And that's also happening at your state level. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say, try to stay as connected as possible to information coming out from, you know, the General Assembly in Maryland, um, in DC, the DC Council, and in Virginia, similarly, your, um, you know, state, your state government, uh, look out for what are they releasing related to employees and employment. Um, so, for example, yesterday I know DC released, uh, DC voted, DC Council voted and included in people who are considered unemployed, um, uh, people who work for themselves and other individuals as well as part of uh, the relief package. So stay up to date with what is coming out related to legislation from your state government so that you could get that information. Great. Thank you, Abby. All right. Thank you guys so much for the discussion. This was great. We got a lot of great information, motivational comments, resources. We understand that there are challenges, but it seems like a lot of you are up for the challenge and are looking to the future as you need to be either compensated, incentivized, or just be recognized as the workforce who will definitely change how we how we address and support communities particularly communities who are marginalized and communities um that are in poverty and of color who are the ones that are hardest hit from situations like this so what we want to do now is just provide a, a, a little bit of information so i'm showing you this on the screen but we will send you this information as well along with the um, evaluation. So just a few tips. So here are some key messages that we want, that some of you are already doing. We wanna make sure that you're emphasizing this with the members that you're working with. And also things that you need to consider for yourself. Stay at home if you can, practice social distancing. A lot of you already talked about how your organizations have set up guidance and processes around that. I am so glad and so grateful that that's happening. Hand washing. Um, Wash hands with the soap and water for at least 20 seconds, multiple times a day. An alcohol-based hand sanitizer can be used if soap and water are not available. But when you're looking at organizations like the World Health Organization, CDC, that hand washing is your best bet. So if you can get to hand washing, I know um, in the state of Maryland, they set up hand washing stations around in the community. It may be happening in other states and so you know, making sure that communities are aware that the hand washing is like your number one. Um, avoid touching eyes, nose, mouth with unwashed hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. If you are an essential worker, stay home if you are feeling sick, if you're having any types of symptoms. Cover your cough or sneeze with the tissue, then throw the tissue away in the trash. Um, clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces. Daily, if you guys are coming, have to come into the office, this, there should be equipment or there should be materials or things that are there to help you wipe down surfaces like phones. Don't forget your cell phones. They hold all kinds of germs, your glasses. Making sure those things are wiped off and kept as disinfected or clean as, as much as possible. Just general information that we always hear, but it doesn't hurt to refresh, okay? And then for resources um, for your clients, all of you have talked about some of this already, but local connecting them to local food pantries. Find out if pharmacies are delivering or if they provide discounts. There are apps as well, if people are cell phone savvy, that provide discounts to a lot of prescriptions. Um, particularly, a lot of people now, antibiotics, they are sometimes zero in places like Walmart and other places who um, also may deliver as well. Um, social media campaigns. So we don't want to get people to, to, to look at all the social media, take all the myths and everything in, but we also want to connect people to the campaigns that are supporting um, information and are funneling resources for clients to be connected to in their community. Websites that provide sheltering in place information. So if you are a community health worker, 
and you want to be able to provide the best information to support your clients and sheltering in place, knowing what supplies they need, knowing how to take care of their homes in this, in this, in this time, knowing when they need to go out to get food, how they need to go out with, um, if masks are needed, those types of things, understanding that, um, things like batteries and other things and sheltering in place, just looking at those websites, looking at your local health departments who may have that information and sharing relevant, valid information with your clients about sheltering in place. Effective utilization of local help helplines and call centers. So most states have things like 211, 311, or may have other helplines and call centers. So we wanna make sure you as community health workers are not just giving people the number but also having them to ask the right questions so they can really get what they really need. Guiding them through the right helplines and um, call centers, preferably um, um, this, this day and age doesn't matter if it's 800 number, you know, everything can go through, but just making sure that they are uh, call centers that may be a man at 24 hours a day that provide not just physical types of resources, but also as mentioned earlier, mental health support, crisis hotlines. If people are struggling mentally, um, if people are struggling and having crisis in their homes. What I've been seeing um, a, a lot across the country um, um, and from other countries as well that could increase here is there has been an increased level of domestic violence because people are home now um, and are stuck at home. Unfortunately, that was the case prior, but it's going to increase as well as um, abuse, child, uh, abuse to children and elderly. So we wanna connect people to the right resources to support them around that. Um, state health departments and health insurance exchanges. Um, so right now, um, within your health insurance exchange, there has been created a special coronavirus enrollment. So if you have people who need insurance and they are, besides the regular special enrollment around if someone has a baby, um, if gets gets a divorce or any other special, you lose your job, any other special type of situation, that in, um, enrollment is already there. But now they've added a special coronavirus enrollment that can now be consented over the phone and you can be enrolled and signed up. So if you are encountering clients and patients who don't have insurance, but who now, who now are sick or have the symptoms and don't have a way to pay for services around coronavirus, there is an enrollment for that. So each state and health department insurance exchange should have, to have that information on their websites. Um, I know for Maryland on the health exchange, uh, there are new flyers and information um, because usually you could go to different call centers and different places to go in and sign up at your social services offices. So since those are now limited and closed to people coming in, this can be also done now online. Um, and encourage individuals to call their primary care offices um, related to other non-COVID-19 health concerns. So, you know, we're so inundated with COVID-19, but there are people who are still dealing with diabetes, hypertension, heart failure, HIV, different types of health concerns and asthma um, who still need support and help. So you want to continue to encourage them to connect with their healthcare provider to connect through you if you are a part of working with those clinicians and supporting your clients, because people should not ignore their other health issues because of these fears of contracting COVID-19. Okay, do we have any questions around the last recent um, slides or anything, Tatua? Um, nothing's popped up, but um, if anyone would like to raise their hand or put a question in the chat, um, we'd love to answer. Okay. Oh, I have two hands. All righty. Uh, yes. So Priscilla, I see your hand. Okay, so I just had a quick question for Jawan. I, I wanted, you just mentioned that um, in the event that people are not, can you, uh, people do not have health insurance and, they've, in the, and they are sick. You mentioned a place where they can go and sign up. I didn't see that there was a link on there. Where did you say that they could go again? So do your state health departments and your health insurance, whatever your health insurance exchange websites are, they should, that information should be on those exchanges. So when you go and sign up for health insurance through the exchange, there is a special enrollment period for coronavirus. And you can usually find those connected to your health departments or like in Maryland, there's Maryland Health Connect. 
That's the exchange for Maryland. DC has an exchange as well as Virginia, correct? So yeah, well, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in Suffolk, Virginia. You in Suffolk, Virginia. So on the Virginia Health Exchange, there should be some information around special coronavirus enrollment. Okay. Because that's nationwide. That's not just statewide. That's a nationwide statewide. special enrollment, right? Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Yeah. And then we have Juliet Williams. Mm -hmm. I see your hands raised. If you want to unmute yourself. Sure. I just, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hi, good morning. All right. All this is great information. And um, I like to piggyback on what we do because we're now also working telecommuting, I mean, teleworking. Mm -hmm. I go out on the state website every morning to get the new updates they have right. on the COVID-19 epidemic. And um, all the information I get, I have emails and I have telephone numbers for our clients. Mm -hmm. And I send them the updates and I tell them beforehand when I speak to them, I'm going to be sending you things every day. Um, if you can't use it, just delete it. But if you know someone who can use it, please mm. hold on. Because um, today, like you were saying earlier, people who are self-employed are now eligible to apply for unemployment. Mm -hmm. so our job, or my job as a community health worker is to make sure they get those resources. Mm -hmm. And um, unfortunately, I, we only work in Montgomery County, but we have a lot of clients that are in other counties. And I tell them, I'll, I'll send you this, look at what I have and see if your county offers the same thing or if it's something we have that your county doesn't offer, call them and find out. Right. Also on the state website, it, um, it, um, Governor Hogan announced that he had, it tells you what legislature he signed in the emergency for this, mm -hmm. that all doctors are supposed to be teleworking, they're supposed to be telehealth now so your clients can call in. Mm -hmm. So he's done a lot of updates that you can be aware of just by going on that site and you can forward the email to them and they can yes, listen he does. It, or you can paraphrase it, but let them know because you said earlier, sometimes people don't know what to say when they make that phone call mm -hmm. and you have to give them the right words because they're upset, they're distressed, mm -hmm. whatever. And if they say the wrong thing, sometimes you have somebody on the other end of the phone that's just not as receptive or as warm as they should be. Right. But I always mm -hmm. tell my clients, Call me back if you have any problems and I'll help. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. They really that, have, mm -hmm. they have an ear to, you know, a listening ear. Yes. Now, the sad part about this is that my, because I'm doing a lot of phone calling, people are so starved to talk to you, they don't hang up the phone the way they used to. Yeah. <laughs> they want to chat. So I don't call as many clients. I have like 80 people I need to call. So I'm dividing them up and trying to call them mm -hmm. alternating days. But they're so appreciative to get that phone call. Yes, yes. That someone is thinking about them listening and providing information. That's mm -hmm. a great way mm -hmm. to continue to stay connected. Mm -hmm. And but we also have to be mindful, guys. We're not using our own personal phone numbers. Um, I don't know if you can get if your job has given you phones. Some jobs haven't. You can create a Google number because you still want self care is important. Right. Yeah, we have a special number that we call from. Got gotcha. you. Our number. Uh huh. And, um, yeah, it, it's just like we have people, senior citizens that can't go shopping. So I have to make right. sure we get that covered to make sure the food is delivered to them. Mm -hmm. So there's so much stuff that we can do, even though you're teleworking. Um, you can just help by that one little phone call, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. Sure. So yes, as community health workers, you are um, researchers and observers. You are should be staying connected to your state and local um, announcements. I know in Maryland, Governor Hogan comes on every Monday and updates about new policies and new procedures and what's available. Um, in, in DC and Virginia, I know DC, their health department website is constantly updating with resources and information and stats. Um, Virginia, I'm not really familiar, but I know you probably, you guys probably have some of the same things going on. So as community health workers, you need to be um, on the top of what's happening because when you talk to your clients, they're going to want to know that you know um, the most relevant information and how to support them. So at some point during your day, stop and just make sure that you're getting the most accurate, up-to-date information and you're researching the reputable sites um, and uh, dispelling some of those myths because your client's going to be asking you questions around that as well. 
see a couple of hands raised. Um, hi, Abby. Hi, I was just going to say, um, Dawana, it would be a great idea if we can make sure that we send out those links to each of the state's um, COVID response website. Okay. okay. So that people have that accurate website as they are getting resources to their clients, because that's a great idea. Got it. Anyone else before we move on? We're almost done. Thank you so much, guys, for um, your patience with us and having you guys have a discussion. I think this is great. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we also want to do, and we will be providing um, actual a way to link to, to just click on these links, but I wanted to show you that um, the National Association of Community Health Workers has a web series uh, also on CHWs and COVID, as well as they have resource, a whole resource page of how to support you guys around self-care, of uh, advocating for your role within COVID, within um, uh, uh, on-site response, um, making sure that your voice is heard. They also have a survey that they're getting from as many, <coughs> excuse me, I'm talking about, <coughs> excuse me, CHWs as possible around some of the things that we've been asking you guys questions around. So I definitely would go to that website. Um, and I think those resources are not just for members, they're for CHWs now in general, but if you are looking to, to be a member, eventually to be connected nationally and see what's happening around the CHWs around the country, that is a great opportunity. Um, Last Mile Health um, is the organization at Harvard University that's actually doing training <coughs> for CHWs in pandemics. It is an online training process and strengthening the work of community health workers around pandemics. Um, the Centers for Disease Control, local and up-to-date COVID-19 statistics as well. This is something that you should be checking daily if you want to look at nationally what's happening around as far as the national maps um, and a lot of resources around supporting clients who are staying quarantined, staying in place, and they are connected to also the local CDC information as well. Dia de la Mujer y su familia. This is a organization that has uh, uh, recorded webinars promoting self-care support and training for CHWs. Uh, the most recent one is five action steps community health workers and promotors can make right now. So just you know, providing you more information, more uh, resources, more ways to take care of yourself in the field. And IPHI also, if you would, if you would like, we have, we have created a frequently asked question sheet for CHWs when they're talking to their clients to make sure that um, you are giving consistent, appropriate information, helping to dispel a lot of myths that we're hearing out there um, about young people not getting it and people of color not getting it. All of that is not true. So this frequently asked questionnaire will help dispel a lot of those myths, bring people to the right information and, and um, online and offline locations of resources and information. So we created that initially for our CHWs within the programs that they work in. But if that's something that your organization is working on and needs like a template or something, just let us know and we can get that to you. And before we wrap up um, next week, um, we're actually gonna have one or two nurse practitioners available for you to ask questions about physical and mental safety, precautions and prevention around COVID-19. These ladies are on the front lines now, uh, are nurse practitioners, and they can provide some real-time, real-life support, information, um, understanding how to, to make a proper mask if that's needed, knowing how to support your clients who are homebound, um, but also talking about supporting yourself and being safe out there if you have not been given enough uh, support around protecting. To two, I see a couple of things. Did anybody have a question or raise their hand? <clears throat> yeah, um, Juliet was kind of mentioning about our screenshot um, or the picture of uh, Maryland. And, uh -huh. um, and so I, I've now linked all three websites um, in the chat for um, the DC, Maryland, Virginia um, 
health department coronavirus websites. Okay, great. Thank you. The information. So, um, cause she was saying that uh, Montgomery can't, or she um, thinks that Mon Montgomery County has the highest number of cases. So um, I would definitely just like, like we said, you know, those screenshots and those numbers are from yesterday and right. um, like the so day before that. Change. Yeah. So, um, you know, I provided the links in the chat, but you know, we'll also like kind of app, Abby was saying, we're going to provide you with, with these resources and these links as well. Yes. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I did link those in the chat if anyone was interested, because of course, unfortunately, they probably have changed today mm -hmm. and we just have to keep staying updated. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Fill out the training evaluations and return by this each Friday after each session. So we will be sending that later today. And it's just going to be a few questions about the actual training that we had today, as well as a couple of questions around any topics you would like us to uh, develop web sessions on, um, as well as also if you were not able to ask a question or answer a question, you can respond to that on that sheet as well. We're going to be sending that by Survey Monkey. Okay, and if you could fill it out by each Friday, that would be awesome. Um, and then join your local CHW association if you already are, if you're not already a member. There's the Community Health Worker Professional Association of District of Columbia. Um, there's the Maryland CHW Association Incorporated and Virginia CHW Association. So the Maryland CHW Association Incorporated has a Facebook page. Um, and I believe Virginia does as well. And Virginia also has a LinkedIn page. DC, um, I'm not sure they are working on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn pages as well. They are in the midst of really supporting, um, developing their certification process. Um, but they can be, we'll, we'll connect you to their uh, lead for each of the associations. Um, so if you are interested in becoming a member, connecting to other CHWs, and like I said, a lot of these associations are gearing up to do some, some self-care uh, support. Maryland is actually having a happy hour next Friday online with a DJ. So if you need <laughs> to decompress and get your mm -hmm. on, <laughs> you can do that. They're going to be sending it out to all the associations. Um, so anybody can come and join in. Um, on that, they're also the Maryland. The next Maryland meeting is next Wednesday, the fifteenth. It's going to be a one-hour meeting, um, and then you can also check in. They're going to be talking about bylaws, addressing COVID nineteen within Maryland, et cetera. And then in Virginia, if you and DC, if you guys have activities or meetings coming up, it would be great if you guys can send that information to us so we can make sure we can get that out as well. Okay. So I want to just kind of wrap up. Um, here's my contact information. If anybody has any questions, particularly if you have a particular topic for training, please, by all means, um, email me first. I'm really good at getting back about emails and trying to respond to that. If you cannot get a hold of me by email, just follow up a call. Um, IPHI, we have our website up. Um, you can, if you're not familiar or if this is new to you, learning about IPHI, please go on and connect to our website. Um, uh, if you have any general questions or information about IPHI and what we do, there is also a link, info at institutephi.org, as well as our general information number. Okay, and like I said, we will be putting this information as well um, in uh, with the uh, uh, after session evaluation so you can have this at the ready. Okay. Any last minute comments or questions? I thank you so much for your time and attention. Um, and I appreciate everyone who were, a, who were able to send a question, who was able to provide some information and talk today. I think it was very helpful for everyone to hear and connect to. Um, I'm hoping this is a good resource of support for you guys as we move forward. We're gonna be adding topics around understanding how to uh, COVID and working with um, immigrants and the undocumented populations. We're also going to be adding topics around working with other uh, comorbidities and COVID. You, you guys have clients who have mental health and diabetes and maybe have substance use all together. And now the COVID on top of that, what are the, what are the ways to help support those clients with all those multiple issues? So we're going to be addressing a lot of that within April, but we will be looking in May to move forward and to, uh, bringing more relevant topics to what you would like to see 
as a support for you um, as a CHW, but also through this pandemic. Any final questions or comments? Yes. Um, so someone asked, will we get any CEUs for this session? So um, I think we are going to provide you guys some type of letter so you could use it because I know for Virginia and Maryland, um, you just need documentation that you actually are taking this, this training series. So at the end of the series, we'll provide you a, a letter or a certificate. Um, we, have to, we have to decide what that's going to look like that will help support you with your continuing education that you would need. Yeah. Any other? And then, uh, you know, so the next session is next Wednesday. Um, yes. Same time, same place. So uh, we'll also send you guys a reminder as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we're really excited to keep moving and um, definitely give us any feedback you can on the evaluation. And because um, this is definitely very discussion based and we want to make sure you guys are getting the most out of what we're putting out. Absolutely. Thank you. And Michaela has her hand raised. One last comment. Yes, no, this is not a comment. It's a question. I know you, okay. we, 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 uh, the question I put out was about the CEUs. And yeah, Virginia, um, I wanted to know if you could give a little bit more specific with regards to the letter because, uh, you know, with us having to have so many CEUs to keep our certified. Right. You need about you know, 30, I believe, right? Right, it's 30, right. So, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm not sure. I, I know recently I checked and they weren't accepting any letters. They only wanted to see like, you know, what what classes have you taken and how many CEUs did, did, did uh, does your letter show that, that it, you know, that you have from the okay. taking the So what we will do since we worked around um, that certification process with the organization who does the certification, we'll connect with them and see um, and let them know what we're doing and see what they will require from us to provide you guys that continuing education credit. So we'll definitely connect with them, okay? Thank you so much. That's, that's sure. really helpful. Thank you. No problem. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Have a great day. It's hump day. Um, I hope you guys are being <laughs> Um, and happy and healthy with your families. If you mm -hmm. are dealing with someone who is sick or who has an illness who has passed, my um, general prayers go out to everyone, but stay safe and be healthy, and we will talk with you guys and see you guys next week. All right. Yep. Thank Take you, guys. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. Thank you. It was awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Awesome. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you so much from Baltimore. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.